been the problem for teams all year long. The only team to beat them had to score 48 to do it. That was just an offensive shootout to start the season. And the Saints are better than any team I can remember at never having negative plays. Mm. Drew Brees, if you consider sacks and turnovers the two worst things a quarterback can do, he has a combined 12 on the season. It's one a game. And it, compare that to Dak Prescott, who has a combined 47 mm. on the season. Mm. So mm. like, you, you, there are going to be drives for the Cowboys that end because the defense takes the ball or that you are punting because it's third and 18 because you take a sack. That never happens to New Orleans. New Orleans, if you're never taking sacks, you're never in third and long. You are always in third and manageable to a degree. And that is because they're also not a super high penalized team. So that's the problem for Dallas. Can they create swing plays, which no one's been able to do against New Orleans all year long? That's their path the victory. They obviously have to well, play a clean you game. You can't say in the same can they do it, which no other team has been able to. This is not the kind of team, this is not a Dallas Cowboy team that is suddenly going to turn into a team that is unrecognizable, right? Well, they have played in spurts, what you have said. They've done in spurts mm -hmm. what you're talking about. So now, can they do it over a course of 60 minutes against the best team in the NFL? That's the way you do it. So now it's about style make fights. Mm -hmm. So it's about the NFL trying to make someone play a style you want to play and make them play a style they're uncomfortable. With the Saints, the Saints have done a tremendous job on first down. So if me, if I'm Rod Mar Marinelli, I'm gonna be very aggressive on first down. I'm gonna blitz more on first down than any game because I'm trying to get into what Nick talked about, into those negative plays. I want them in second and 13, I want them in third and long. And on third down, they're gonna have to find someone besides Alvin Kamara. Because mm -hmm. on third down, I'm going to double him. So early in downs, I'm gonna blitz. Third down, I'm doubling Kamara. And listen, when Michael Thomas catches one on you and you got great coverage, you say, hey, you were better than me on that play and don't get frustrated. Because you're, we have seen people have good coverage against him and Drew Brees still is going to throw him the ball and he still comes up with it. Don't get discouraged, but I believe those are things, if you wanna win this game for Dallas Cowboys, those are things gotta happen tonight. Yeah, if you're gonna create those negative plays, you gotta go out there and you got to play fast and you got to be aggressive and that means that your defense needs to have confidence in what they're doing and Rod Marinelli said it earlier this week my job is to make the complex simple so those guys can go out there and play fast he's going to let those front four hunt mm -hmm. those guys are going to get after it so it's it's really up to the responsibilities of the guys on the back end the back seven to have good communication because one of the things that Sean Payton does really well with his offense is a lot of window dressing there's a lot of movement a lot of motion those types of things shifts yeah, they're trying does, to get you to think to slow you down and that's when Drew Brees has the advantage he tries to get defenders to think but also Canty guys like yourself talk about your eyes mm -hmm. he always tries to get your eye placement somewhere where it shouldn't be and then they run one of the most most basic of plays. Which is how guys run wide open. How, guy, yep. how undrafted free agents are all of a sudden running wide open. But we, we've spent the majority of the segment talking about Saints offense, Cowboys defense. Cowboys defense could play a great game. And the Saints still scored 28, 30 points. 30 points. Like, yeah. listen, they, the Saints have played 11 games this year. Twice they've been held under 30. So they're getting mm -hmm. around, um, at a minimum, probably 28, and really at a minimum around 31. So if the Cowboys are going to win, they have to score at least four touchdowns. They, there's no, you are not beating this, this year's Saints team 21-17. Mm -hmm. That game does not exist. So how do the Cowboys score points? Yes, they need Zeke to be great. But they need Zeke to be so good early that the play action is a true threat. That you are actually, that the Saints are committing extra people to stop the run, that you do have Amari mm -hmm. in a one-on-one -on -one spot, and that Dak can make some throws downfield. Like you, you, the Cowboys have to have some explosive plays because even if the defense does everything we've outlined here, the Saints will find ways to get 27, 28 points at a minimum. They've done it every week this year. Chris, what would a win for the Cowboys over a team like the Saints mean for them? So much more than just a notch in the win column. Well, I think that it would give them some confidence in terms of what they've been doing. They're on a three-game winning streak, but but this would be a true test. If they can get this done a team that's going to be in the postseason, I think this can give them some momentum as we get closer to January because every team is trying to figure out exactly who they are this, this time of year, whether they're a contender or a pretender. I think this would prove to the Dallas Cowboys, those guys in that locker room, that they're for real. And Kenty, we always see November and December, we see a team around 500 
they start playing the right way, no matter if they got guys healthy, those backups are now starters and they played a few weeks, they start to play good football. And there are things late in the season, those last five or six games, I've seen the teams that you were on, mm -hmm. they triggered you. You, you got a, a, a sense of confidence by you had a win over a team. That's what th this could do for the Cowboys. If they're going to have a special season, if they're going to get in the playoffs and potentially try to win that first playoff game that this young group would win, it would come off momentum of a game like this. It ain't about who's having the best season. It's about who's playing the best this time of year. Because, right. I mean, that championship team that I was on in 2011, we had to win the last two to get in the postseason. Yeah. And then we were able to go on a run. So I think the Dallas Cowboys have an opportunity for that just based on how they're built as a football team because they can run the ball, they can play good defense. Those things translate into success once we get to January. And one of the reasons the Saints right now are the Super Bowl favorite out of the NFC is because right now things have to go through New Orleans in the NFC. On the flip side, a loss to Dallas, what it means for the Saints is they're chasing after the Rams, who have the second softest remaining schedule of everyone in the league. Mm -hmm. After this week, the Saints have at Tampa, the one team that's beat them, Tampa's not good, at Carolina, home for the Steelers, home for Carolina. This would be a very tough loss for the Saints as far as getting the number one overall seed. Anyone at this table think Dallas can do it? I do. I do. Do you? Can, sure. Will, no. No, I do not. Speak for yourself. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Coming up, has Baker Mayfield finally gone too far? That's next on First Things First.